What's up, Crypto Universe? It's me, Eugene Tay. And it's me, Malcolm. We're back again in the hot seat. For 2019, uh, we've been quite quiet. I, I, I was missing from last week's video. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's a story for a different time because I was investigating a money game system. Uh, but watch out for the next video where we'll talk about investigating the hype on money game. All right, so that's that special announcement is out of the way. Let us take a look at what's up with the crypto universe in the last seven days. I think first up on my list is the Cryptopia hack yeah. incident. I used yeah. to use Cryptopia a lot. I think it was a it was a, like a gold mine. It was like a mm. place where you find gems. Mm. In the last time when uh, the bull market was here, everybody was, was rushing to find the next 100 times, the next 50 times. Yeah. And the, the, the coins that I used to buy in Cryptopia was like uh, Lux. Mm. Um, this is coin called Monkey Coin. This is Monkey ah, Coin, right? You guys are your Monkey Coin. Yeah. Uh. Uh, do I, used to buy Doge, I used to buy Doge Coin in Cryptopia mm. as well. And I actually found quite a, lit quite a lot of like interesting stuff to yeah, buy there. Yeah. yeah, Cryptopia was one of the early... Um, <clears throat> Uh, exchanges that were out and a lot of people are just playing around with that uh, but unfortunately Cryptopia has came out with a announcement to say that it's been hacked it, the case has been reported to the New Zealand police um, I think they lost what 3.5 million mm -hmm. yeah um, around there so anytime a bad news hits the market along with it will come with its fair share of rumors yeah yeah as you know 2018 has been a very bad year for a lot of crypto projects exchanges were losing mm. money there was no volume, no volume right now. So many of people who were mm. affected by the hack lost money. The first thing that came to the mind is that they assume that Cryptopia must have ran away with the money and called and, and claimed that it's been hacked. Yeah, I mean uh, that that's that kind of scenario was actually quite uh, was reported for uh, one Korean exchange mm. called Bitum as well. Mm. You know, uh, it was uh, so it was a huge coincidence at that time where they were supposed to pay their taxes. <laughs> you know, but uh, apparently a, a amount of money got hacked. But Bitum actually uh, reimbursed the, the loss, yeah. right? Yeah. So Bitum, you know, so that is that, which is good. You know, that kind of clarifies things. Mm. Uh, for 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 hacking, you know, in the history of, of crypto, whenever an exchange has been hacked, there's always been negative price. You know. Uh, discussions mm. for like Bitcoin, you know, for the entire market. Like when certain when Mount Gods got hacked, you know, everybody was like, oh, panic that was a big deal, yeah. Uh, the interesting thing about Cryptopia is um, nothing really happened. <laughs> because the, the market. market is yeah. kind of meh yeah. <laughs> now. So even with the announcement that Cryptopia got hacked, uh, the market did not react uh, negatively mm. or positively in, or yeah. didn't react in any way. Well, one way you can look at it is it can't get any worse than this. Yeah. And now on to our next piece of news. So the next piece of news that we have to share today is about the Constantinople hard fork by Ethereum. Mm. So it's scheduled to be live on 17th of January, but it has been postponed until further notice. Mm. And one of the biggest, uh, one of the reasons why it was postponed is because of a flaw in the smart contract. So it called a re-entrance attack. Uh, the vulnerability essentially allows an attacker to re-enter the same function multiple times without updating the user about the state of affairs. Mm. So under this scenario, an attacker could essentially be withdrawing funds forever. Okay, that sounds bad. <laughs> Said Jones Espino, CTO of Blockchain Analytics from Ember Data in a previous interview with Coindesk. So basically, this is something similar to the DAO attack that happened in 2016. And this basically allows people to, or, or hackers, to withdraw money without anybody noticing mm. because of flaws in the codes of the smart contract. So I think it was a very wise decision not to rush it, you know, and say that, okay, fine, we have actually found a flaw, let's take it slowly, let's postpone it, and mm. kind of see how we can fix this, you know. Very good. Mm. And on to news number three. On blockchain use case, HSBC Bank have successfully implemented blockchain usage for their FX transfer to the tune of $250 billion. That's correct, <laughs> what he said. So uh, we are seeing actually banks adopting blockchain technology uh, and I think one of our co-hosts, um, Radical Rock, has predicted that 2019 will be a year for a lot of private blockchains coming up, services that use private blockchain and people like uh, the mainstream audience won't really know or get to feel what goes on behind the scenes. Which is good, right? Yeah, you, know, you, don't, yeah. you don't have to know everything that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, as long as it works, as long as it serves its purpose, I think that's great. Uh, just a little bit more information, their tech is known as FX Everywhere. And it set up more than 3 million <laughs> transactions. <laughs> so, 3 million transactions in a tune of $250 billion. Great news for HSBC and for mm. blockchain. And the only question I have is the, the cost saving of using the blockchain and you know, 
uh, minimizing your paperwork, that cost saving actually gets returned back to the users. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good point. But I think I think it does. I think the paperwork will be much less, mm. and I think the people working in HSBC should be quite happy. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> knowing that they have all these things locked inside a ledger that's stored online. What's well, so the next news? We have a bill coming out from Russia. Mother Russia has a no, bill. I, I thought no? we were going to skip this one. Oh, skip. Yeah. 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 Israel largest shipping company. I I, I can do this. Okay. Like the and on the last final piece of news today. So Israel's largest shipping company and 11th in the world ranking opens blockchain platforms for electronic bills. You know, a transaction is settled in less than two hours as opposed to multiple days, mm. which the process usually blockchain takes. Blockchain use case. Yeah, I mean, well I mean, this is has always been one of the better use cases for blockchain, you know, yeah. storing documents, making sure it's legit, mm. you know, across other things like banking, like mm. logistics, all these kind of stuff. I think this is a great way to kind of like solidify the users of blockchain. It's mm. not just used to, for currency, for speculation, for all this kind of stuff. Mm. There is real use cases and real things that blockchain can actually be very useful for. That's right. But all these are really kind of dry for most mainstream audience. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who have been following us, thank you very much. Uh, like, subscribe and share this with all your friends. Satoshi's quest have came to an end on the 3rd of January. That also 10 years ago, uh, that was when the first batch of Bitcoin, 50 Bitcoin, the first Genesis block was mined by Satoshi Nakamoto, the man himself, right? Uh, so somebody actually won our treasure hunt. You know, we have a lot of people <laughs> messaging us and saying it's impossible to solve, but one guy solved it and he walked away with one Bitcoin for yeah. his effort. So uh, if you want to find out the answers to the treasure hunt, Go check out our website, www.rocktheblock.live. The answers are all up there and you'll find out that actually it's quite easy. You probably know the answer yourself. <laughs> yeah, uh, moving up next this year, a big deal for us is Block Trotters. Uh, Block Trotters is a travel reality show where we go around Southeast Asia to look for anything to do with blockchain. We look at culture, we look at lifestyle and look at blockchain businesses. And really, is crypto usable in today's current climate? Well, we're going to find out and we invite you to join us on that. So more information on that to be coming up in the future videos. But for now, we want to uh, bring the spotlight over to our co-host, Radical Rock, who's going to talk to you about STO, IPOs and all the others. Okay, cool. <laughs> awesome. Over to you, Rock. Hello, Crypto Universe. This is me, Radical Rock. Okay, I believe probably you have seen my two videos with the Rock the Block team and I hope you enjoy them. 2019 is an exciting and challenging year for Radical Finance. Okay, we have done a couple of free copies for Radical Research basic version. So if you're interested, please go to my website, radical.finance to download the free copies. And we have started a subscription basis for 2019, which is two copies only for $15, Singapore dollar. So yeah, and Another exciting news is we have published an article for CoinMarketCap. So we talk about different ways of fundraising. So last year we see that ICO um, has gotten a hit and a lot of projects are failing. So is ICO a good way to fundraise? Or we have STO as the hype that is taking over? Or should fundraise go back to traditional securities way of fundraising? So all this is covered in the CoinMarketCap article. Um, if you are interested, please go to CoinMarketCap blog to take a look. So for this January version of Radical Research, we also touch on are there any correlations between stock market and crypto markets? I think this is uh, very interesting for all the investors and traders. So because um, we have been in 10 years of bull market for US stocks, so are the financial crisis coming. So all these will be covered in the January version of Radical Basic version. Radical Research has also launched an enterprise version on use cases of blockchain. Just now, Eugene has mentioned that actually besides um, public blockchain, there's a lot of big corporation utilizing, implementing private blockchain. So in our enterprise version, we also look at use cases First issue is on supply chain management. It's a case study research and implementation guide that enterprise can use to help them to understand more about blockchain technology. Okay, so that's all about radical finance for 2019 and let's 
go back to our host Eugene Tay. And so, we have come to the end of today's news on Rock the Block Live. Uh, it's me, Eugene Tay. And it's me, Malcolm. Saying goodbye, like, share this video with all your friends, and we'll see you guys next week. Remember to comment on the section below.